RollForCrit.com presents How to Play Regnum Angelica in 5 Minutes or Less or More. Regnum Angelica is the epic game of heaven and hell, angels and demons, the Da Vinci Code, designed by Casey Willett and Aaron Young and published by Black Locust Games. Regnum Angelica is a game for two players in which each player chooses a side, good or evil. The first person to score 35 points by maneuvering enough of their angels into their opponent's base wins. You begin the game with seven cards in hand, zero power on the power scale, and a score of zero. At the start of each turn, you draw movement cubes according to your current power level. If you have zero power, you still get to draw one movement cube. These cubes are used for movement. There are three different types of cards that you'll be dealing with. Angels, scripts, and pillars. Angels are your minions on the field who fight and score for you. Scripts and pillars are like spells you can cast, which we'll get into later. After gathering movement cubes, you can play one new angel onto the field each turn by putting it face down somewhere in the starting area near your base. You can never have more than five angels on the field at one time. Then, you have the option of activating one of your angels by flipping it over. You can't activate an angel that you just played, it has to have been played at least one turn earlier. Until an angel is activated, it can't move. It just sits there, face down, a secret to everybody. Except you, you played it. Once you've activated an angel, it first brings its special ability into effect, printed on its card. Some of these are ongoing, some are one time only. It can then be moved up to the amount of spaces listed on its card. For each of those movements, you'll need to spend one movement cube. So if you don't have enough cubes, or you reach the max movement on the angel's card, it's done for the turn. You can also split cubes up to move multiple angels in one go. They can move diagonally and even backwards. Depending on where your angel ends up, different things can happen. If it ends its movement on one of these special earth zone spaces in the center of the board, you get a reward, either one or two power, or the ability to draw another card right away. You only get the benefit of an earth zone space once per active angel. If your angel manages to get into your opponent's goal space, you gain a number of points equal to their rank printed in the top left corner. Upon scoring, you also move your power track down to zero. If you move into the same space as an enemy angel, a battle takes place. On each angel card, you'll see a grid with one or more of the following element symbols, earth, fire, and water. These represent that angel's attack abilities depending on which direction they attack from. For example, if this angel were to attack this other angel from here, its attacking element would be water, and the defending angel's element would be earth. Or, if it were to come in from here, the attacking element would be earth, and the defending element would be water. You ignore all the other element symbols and focus only on the two that are actually meeting each other. The combat then works like rock, paper, scissors. Fire beats earth, earth beats water, and water beats fire. If two of the same elements match, the angel with the higher rank wins. If ranks are the same, then it's a tie and both are killed off simultaneously. If your angel wins, it moves into the same spot as the loser, and the loser goes to that player's void or discard pile. Once your angel attacks, it can't move anywhere else until its next turn, even if it still has movement points left. You can even attack face down angels if you want to, but it's risky since you won't know what their elements or activation ability will be until you fight them. You don't get any points for winning battles, but it does make your life a little easier. Each side has one special angel with all infinity symbols. They can only be defeated by script cards or each other. While your big guy is in play, you can't move your power level over four. Speaking of special abilities, you can also play scripts at any given time by spending the amount of power listed on that card. These scripts allow you to do things like ignore movement limits or retrieve cards from your discard pile. Scripts may be countered by other scripts from your opponents outside of their turn. Also on your turn, when placing new angels on the field, you can spend power to play pillar cards. Place the pillar of the card's indicated element on an angel of your choice, even an unrevealed one. That angel now has a special shield. The next time they enter combat, their fighting symbol will be whatever that pillar is, regardless of what is printed on their card. And if the pillar gets destroyed, the angel is still alive until it gets defeated again. Pretty nifty. If you manage to get an angel with a pillar into the goal, the pillar counts as one extra rank and point for your score. Finally, you can burn scripts or pillars. Burning is discarding them without activating their abilities in exchange for the amount of power it would have cost to play them normally. Handy when you need some extra power. At the end of your turn, draw one card from your deck or up to four cards if you're below four cards. You lose any movement cubes that you didn't spend during that round. 
Again, first player to 35 points wins. The game ends prematurely if either player's deck runs out, in which case whoever has the highest score at that time wins. In conclusion, play angels, activate angels, fight angels, score angels, angels in the outfield. That's Regnum Angelica in a nutshell. Did you get all that?